There is universal agreement. The next few days will be worse in Ukraine and thus more dangerous for the entire world than the past week. In short, these are very serious times, perhaps the most dangerous since the Cuban Missile Crisis. And in the past few hours, President Biden headed to his vacation home in Delaware. He walked to Marine One less than 48 hours after the Russian foreign minister threatened nuclear war. And it's not just the executive branch. The House of Representatives left town without passing the billions in urgent military aid requested by the Pentagon for Ukraine. The Senate isn't back in session till Monday. Must be nice. A weekend of fundraisers awaits. So they hit the road. Have a great weekend, one member of Congress told the reporter at 10.42 a.m. on Thursday. The House just took its last vote of the week. Let's review the past 10 days. Russia defied the world and invaded a U.S. ally. Vladimir Putin twice, and the Russian foreign minister once, threatened nuclear war. Oil is at the highest in a decade, and undoubtedly heading higher, along with the prices of just about everything else. Tens of thousands of U.S. troops are forward deployed to the edge of NATO's border in case of a Russia attack. Russian troops attacked and nearly caused a mil nuclear meltdown in a power plant in Ukraine. The Ukrainians are begging for a no-fly zone, and most of the weapons and resupply authorized by Congress has been spent, meaning the Ukrainians need more weapons, and Congress is not there to authorize it. I could go on, but let's listen to the only person who seems to be working these days, Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Here's his prediction after a NATO meeting earlier today. I think the the terrible expectation is that um, the suffering we've already seen is, uh, is likely to get worse before it gets better. We saw that. Vladimir Putin also sees that clip, and then he sees President Biden head out to Marine One. If you're Putin, what do you think? Save that for a second. As I said, this is not a partisan issue. At the most serious time since Russia parked nuclear missiles 90 miles from Miami, we have effectively unserious leaders. For example, here is longtime Russia hawk, Lindsey Graham. Somebody in Russia has to step up to the plate. Is there Brutus in Russia? Is there a more successful Colonel Stoppenberg in the <coughs> Russian military? The only way this ends, my friend, is for somebody in Russia to take this guy out. You would be doing your country a great service. At a time when the slightest miscalculation can lead to war, is there anything more dangerous to say than a senior United States senator suggesting the assassination of Vladimir Putin? We may all think that way. We may all agree with Senator Graham, but could you dream up any better soundbite for Putin's propaganda machine to play over and over on state TV? Seriously. There is nothing better for Vladimir Putin than telling his population, America wants to kill me because I am standing up and protecting Russia. Lindsey Graham gave Vladimir Putin that soundbite. It is what you might call an unforced error. This is not partisan, nor is it the fault of leaders of either party. It is our fault. This is a democracy or a republic. As my friend Chris Steyerwalt likes to say, we elect our representatives. Thomas Jefferson, in fact, predicted it. The government you elect is the government you deserve, he said. This brings us back to what we said Wednesday and heard from a lot of you about on social media. We have unserious leaders in serious times. Evidence by Congresswoman Bogart, Bobert and Green's childless heckling of Mr. Biden during his State of the Union. Not as if they started it. Speaker Pelosi famously tore up President Trump's State of the Union. Granted, there wasn't a war going on at the time, but you better believe Putin loves seeing the childish behavior of American politicians. He, Putin, more than just about anybody, realizes American politics are much more about Twitter followers and dunking on the other side than getting anything done, rather than protecting America. Ronald Reagan and Democratic Speaker Tip O'Neill didn't agree on most issues, but you could never imagine O'Neill tearing up a Reagan speech. It would show weakness. It would show division to the Soviets. We used to have serious men, war heroes as president. John Kennedy saved the men on his PT boat in the South Pacific. George H.W. Bush was among the youngest dive bomber pilots in the Pacific. They were serious because they had to be. They grew up in that time. Can you imagine Kennedy going to Hyannisport for the weekend during the Cuban Missile Crisis? The unseriousness of today is a luxury for soft people. The good times of the past 70 years were produced by hard men. 
They didn't always necessarily agree, but they got things done. Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Ford, Reagan, George H.W. Bush. That in turn produced a new generation of politicians more interested in their Twitter following than all of us. And in the end, it's our fault. We elected a Congress and president who are gone for the weekend during the most serious time in three generations. Consider the six top elected leaders we have, president, vice president, Speaker of the House and the Senate Majority Leader, House and Senate Minority Leaders. Could you see any of them in a time of war delivering Volodymyr Zelensky's answer for the ages when offered a ride out last week? Is Kevin McCarthy really going to say, I need ammunition, not a ride? If the answer is no, you can't see that. Why do we tolerate them in office? Why do we keep electing them? Say what you want about Mike Pence. But on January 6th, he stayed in the Capitol as a mob attack that wanted to kill him. They were chanting, hang Mike Pence. He refused evacuation by the Secret Service, defied President Trump's orders, and voted to certify Joe Biden as president. That is as close as we have gotten in recent times to a profile in courage. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.